When I was young, I was super shy. I was super afraid of people and I hated it because I realized that this shyness, this fear of people was ruining my life. It was keeping me from getting everything that I wanted. It was keeping me from making the money that I wanted to make. It was keeping me from having the girlfriends I wanted to have. It was keeping me from having the social circle that I wanted to have. And so I knew I had to destroy this stupid fear of people in social situations. And I forced myself to do some kind of crazy stuff in order to get over this. And I remember one day I put on these, I had these green suspenders in a Santa Claus hat that I put on. I think I was wearing like gym shorts, green suspenders and a Santa Claus hat. And I lived in the middle of the city at the time, uh, in like a very busy area. And it was, I think it was a weekend. There were a lot of people out. And so I, I wore this ridiculous out, outfit with the suspenders and the Santa Claus hat. And I forced myself to go to like the busiest area of the town, which was like a 15 minute walk from my house. And every time I saw people, I would say, ho, 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 and wave my hand. And I felt like a complete idiot, but I made myself do this because I wanted to expand my comfort zone. I figured, you know, if I can do that, then I can do anything. And so I did it. I, I went into town and I did this for like an hour and a half straight and it felt horrible at first. It was it was really, really difficult. But by the end, I was kind of desensitized to it. By the end, I was kind of used to it. I was actually having fun. And, and actually, people's uh, reactions to me were, were not bad. You know, they kind of smiled and laughed. People weren't really creeped out. And so I kind of desensitized myself to what was at the very beginning of the day, a very frightening situation. And I know that story is kind of ridiculous, and I'm not saying that you have to go out and do that, but what I do want you to realize is that shyness will destroy you. I mean, especially if you're a man, you know, like women can get away with it. For women, it's cute um, and, and whatever. But if you're, if you're a man or if you're an entrepreneur, you absolutely cannot afford to be shy. You cannot afford to be afraid of people. And, and when I say you cannot afford to, it, it doesn't matter how you feel, right? It matters what you do. So. You can feel shy, you can feel afraid of people, but if you can push through that fear and do it anyway, that's absolutely necessary. There is that is non-negotiable if you were to be successful. And you know, most people think that if you're shy, that's part of your personality, right? You're born that way. You can't change that. You can't change your personality. That's something that God just pointed down from heaven and said, you're going to be shy and, and you're stuck that way for life. That's what most people think because we're conditioned into this born this way culture, as I call it, where everything about you, you're born this way. If you're shy, you were born that way. If you're intelligent, you were born that way. If if you're fat, you were born that way. Like whatever the characteristic about you, you're born that way and you're stuck with it forever, right? That's what society tries to push on us. Most people accept that line of thinking and that's why most people, frankly, are losers. Most people are never going to get what they want in life because they don't even believe that they can. They believe that they were born with whatever shortcomings they might have and there's no way to overcome them. Well, let me be the first to tell you that you can overcome your personal shortcomings and personality is not a curse that is set on you forever that you cannot escape from. The truth is that all of us have a comfort zone. We have a little box that is around us that defines where we are comfortable with acting. Right. And so some of us, the box is just right up against you and you can you can't even put your arms out all the way. You're going to touch the edge of the box. Right. So, I mean, this if for a lot of people like me in the past, your comfort zone is like a coffin. It's just enough room for your body and that's it. And you can barely expand out at all. And so if you're in this situation, then there's very, very little that you are comfortable doing. You can comfortably do the things that you do day to day to day. But if you do anything that's a little bit unusual, even if it has no risk to you at all, and this is the point here, I'm not telling you to go jump off of cliffs or something or, or go take unnecessary risks. I'm saying there's a lot of things that are of no risk to us at all that we are still deathly afraid of doing, right? Such as talking to people. So if you're in this situation, I mean, you're in a coffin. It's almost like you're dead. You got to find a way to expand that box so that instead of having a box that is just like right around your body, now you have a box that gives you a little bit more space, right? And the way that you do that is you go outside your comfort zone. You push the edges 
of your comfort zone. This is actually a very similar concept to the Overton window. If you ever heard of the Overton window, it's basically the idea that it's society's comfort zone, right? The, the range of acceptable speech. Like, for example, and there's the range of acceptable speech. There are always forces trying to put it closer and closer to turn it into a coffin so that you can't, you, you can't say hardly anything. Like, for the uh, good modern example is, is now uh, the Democrats are trying to say that you can't say mother, <laughs> right? Like, you can't say mother. Now you have to say birthing person because according to the Democrats, now men can get pregnant. And so there, there are kind of two ways that we could respond to this. We could say, okay, you, you know, roll our eyes and say, okay, whatever. We'll say birthing person, you know, just in case somebody is offended by the word mother. And then guess what happens? Well, the box gets smaller, right? The box of acceptable speech or the Overton window gets smaller. So if you want to resist that and you want to actually have freedom of expression, then it helps to actually say the things that you're not supposed to say according to the, the people that are trying to force you into this tiny little box. And it's funny, this example specifically, that it's, it's because they're trying to make it politically correct, incorrect to say the word mother, because that's not inclusive to pregnant men. I think it's funny because I read the book Brave New World a while ago, which is a book written, I think in the 40s, that was kind of um, like a dystopian future novel. And in that book, it predicts that in the future, the word mother is going to be a, like a swear word. It's going to be taboo. And, and here it is happening in real time. I highly recommend that book if you ever get the chance. Like it's predicting a lot of what's going on right now. But anyway, whereas there is that Overton window that is kind of the comfort zone of society, there is the comfort zone of the individual, what you feel comfortable personally doing. And the more that you do things that are outside of this comfort zone, let's say you do something over here and something over here, well, now your, your comfort, you start to get used to doing those things, right? It starts to become a habit. And all of a sudden, now your comfort zone looks something like this, right? It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more, the more that your comfort zone expands, the more possibilities you have, right? The more that you're able to do the things that scared you in the past, and oftentimes you need to do those things that scared you in the past in order to get to the things that you want in life. So the question is, how do you do this? How do you intentionally expand your comfort zone? Sometimes in life, you're gonna be forced into situations that expand your comfort zone. And I believe that God puts people in those situations for a reason, right? Because probably you weren't doing it on your own, but you can also do this intentionally, right? And, you know, one way to do that is wear suspenders and a Santa Claus hat and go saying ho, ho, ho to everybody in town. Um, but you don't have to do that. In fact, there's, there's more productive ways to do the same thing. One exercise that I teach my coaching students is, and, and you know, if you're not familiar, I have a coaching program where I teach people to have their own online course businesses. And so part of that is recording videos. And so one thing that I show them how to do before they go and record a video is I have them, first of all, write out a script for their video and then go through that script and read it as, as emotionally and dramatically as they possibly can. And what this does is it opens up their comfort zone, their, their range of expression that they are comfortable with, not because they're gonna be super over dramatic, but just because it, it expands the boundaries, right? So they don't have to be all the way here on the outside, but if they're here, then it sounds a lot better than if they're stifled in their little coffin. And actually, I, I got this idea, I kind of adapted it from um, a guy named Owen Cook, who had a, a, a great idea of, uh, like he had people on a live webcast and they were all, he made them like recount what happened at the beginning of their day in with as much like emotion as possible. So people would say, well, I woke up this morning, I rolled out of the left side of the bed, and then I walked slowly to the bathroom. I opened the door, and then I put toothpaste on my toothbrush, and I quickly but efficiently brushed my teeth. And, you know, you can tell where I'm going with this. I'm not doing a particularly good job. But the idea is that you expand your range of expression. You, you act completely over the top and totally ridiculous so that when you actually go to speak in normal life, the range of your, it's like stretching something out, right? It's like 
like a, a piece of clothing that's too tight and you stretch it out and now, now you have breathing room. So that's an exercise I would definitely invite you to try. Just try, you know, if you don't have an ad to record, then, then talk about what happened in the morning with as much like over the top emotion as you possibly can. And what you'll probably find is even if there's nobody to hear you, right? Even if there's no reason to, to be embarrassed about somebody thinking that you're stupid, like even if you're completely on your own, it's still difficult, right? Because you still have that little coffin around you. And so the more you force yourself to do it, the bigger that comfort zone gets, the bigger the box gets, and now the more things that you can comfortably do. And now here's where it gets really, really useful. And, and again, this is an exercise that I would invite you to do. Pull out a pen and paper and put down some goal that you have in your life. What is something that you want in your life? Maybe it's an income goal, maybe it's a relationship goal, maybe, um, you know, whatever it is. And write down what that goal is and then spend 15, 20 minutes uninterrupted, you know, put your phone on airplane mode if you have your phone beside you and write down the steps that you need in order to get to that goal. Like, what do you need to get to that goal? And you're not going to know 100%, right? This is not going to be like a bulletproof plan that you're going to follow for the rest of your life, right? This is just what do you think right now that you need to know? And chances are, when you have that list of steps, there's probably going to be one or two steps in there that makes you a little bit nervous, that is beyond the box around you, that's beyond your little coffin that you're going to have to break out of that comfort zone in order to do. So how do you break out of that comfort zone? Well, you follow the steps that you laid out, right? You follow the steps to get to your goal, including the ones that make you nervous, including the ones that are gonna force you to break out of your comfort zone. And if you need motivation to do that, just visualize what happens when the goal is accomplished, right? How good are you going to feel about yourself when you have the thing that you wanted to have? And not only that, but you recognize that you passed your own personal limitations in order to get to that goal. I found, and I think that you will find as well, that reaching for what you really want in life forces you to grow in a way that nothing else does. It forces you to grow really, really fast so that a year from now, you're not even going to recognize yourself. And maybe the people around you aren't going to recognize you either. I mean, that, that's when, you know, you go see your old friends and they say, well, you've changed, man. And you're like, yeah, you haven't. And that's another thing that people are afraid of, right? They're afraid that if they, if they um, do something too much different, too much out of the ordinary, then the people that have been around them are not going to accept them anymore. And that's another fear that you're going to have to push past. So for me, I've made a habit of this. Like if, you know, if I'm the same person a year from now as I am now, I'm going to be disappointed, right? I do not want to be the same person a year from now as I am now. I'm growing every single day. I'm changing every, every single day. And year by year, I'm going to be a completely different person. If you watch me on YouTube a year from now, assuming I'm still doing YouTube, I, I expect that you will see that this is a different person a year from now than I am today. In fact, if I look back in my life so far, I can, I can tell that the moments that defined me, the moments that really made me grow, that really made me get to the next level in life, were the moments when I did something that was very uncomfortable, that was very difficult for me, that was outside of my comfort zone, that involved taking some kind of risk or pushing, back, pushing past a fear that I had that was holding me back. For example, the first time that I decided to travel alone, right? I decided to get a plane ticket to Europe never having been there before, not knowing anything about it, going all by myself, you know, it was a little nerve wracking, right? But I did it anyway and actually had an amazing time, which is something that you'll find is kind of a recurring pattern. It's like, even if the thing that you do doesn't work out, it's still going to feel really, really good because you realize that you had the courage to actually do it, right? You feel that growth in your soul and it feels really, really good. Um, another another time was when I, I quit my, my good job, right? I had a job that was the envy of all my friends. I was making $90,000 a year, barely working, to be honest, because they didn't really have much work for me. Um, in, a, in an office, I was working hybrid, so I was remote half the time and in the office half of the time. And, and a lot of people thought I was like the greatest job in the world. Well, I quit because even though it was a pretty good job, I wanted more. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a business owner. I didn't want to be working 
every day to create somebody else's dream. I wanted to create my own dream. And so I quit my job, even though I did not have the income to replace it at that time. I had saved up a little bit and I said, okay, I'm going to quit. I'm going to figure it out, right? If I have 40 hours a week extra that I can devote to whatever it is that I'm going to do, then I will figure it out, right? And I quit. Another time when it was when I first invested in coaching, in business coaching, I spent $36,000 of money that I did not have. I had about half of it stored in my, my retirement account and the other half I went into debt for. That was not easy, right? I had to push through a lot of fear on that because I wasn't guaranteed anything, right? I was completely taking a leap of faith, but I ponied up the money and I did it anyway. And guess what? It ended up not working, right? The, and you know, I like the guy, the, the coach, but the truth was he just didn't know what I should do in the situation that I was in because I was a rank beginner. I was starting from nothing. He had started from nothing like 20 years ago. Um, and so he was trying to coach me how to get started from nothing now when the truth is he really had no idea. And so everything he told me to do flopped and it didn't work. But here's the thing. I'm still glad that I did it, right? I'm still glad that I took that leaf of faith because it made me grow. It made me realize that people are willing to pay a lot of money for things because I was myself, right? Which is, you know, is really, really helpful from a mindset perspective going forward as a coach myself now. And even though it didn't work the way that I wanted in terms of getting to the, the goal that I wanted, it grew me. It made me grow enormously, which actually reminds me of a, another story of my brother who um, one summer got this job where he was, we were living in, in Florida and he was going to, he's going to travel to Iowa for the entire summer and live in some stranger's basement and go door to door trying to sell some sort of books like encyclopedias or something door to door in Iowa. And, and he signed up for this, like for the entire summer. And my whole family, myself included, thought he was nuts. Like we all told him not to do it, but he went and did it anyway. Right. And he spent the whole summer living on somebody's floor and, and spending 12 hours a day trying to sell books. And guess what? It failed miserably. <laughs> like he, he barely made any money. However, the fact that he was willing to do that and put himself in that that drastic and expansion from his comfort zone set him up for success later on down the road. And now he's actually doing very well for himself. Another thing that scared the heck out of me was doing live webinars, right? Well, doing live presentations to people over the Internet um, was like I'd never done anything like that before, but it was what my coach told me to do. So I did it over and over and over again. It was not comfortable. Um, I practiced a lot. I was really nervous, but I pushed through it. And then that skill now has been worth a lot of money to me. It didn't work then, mostly because I had no idea how to actually get people on the webinars. Uh, but once I was able to figure out that piece, now it's made me a lot of money. Same thing when I started recording YouTube videos. Recording videos is difficult. I mean, it's like having a conversation with an inanimate piece of plastic. It's really, really weird at first. And again, it's and uh, the other thing is that once you actually record the video, then putting it out there for people to judge is really, really nerve wracking. And, and actually, I got a lot of like nasty trolls at the beginning when I started recording videos. And I was I was recording videos about digital nomad stuff at that point about like living um, around the world and, and working from a computer. And I, I found out and, and this was kind of a shock to me that like some of the nastiest people I've ever encountered in my entire life are digital nomads. Now, I'm not saying that about all digital nomads. I was a digital nomad. I thought it was a fun life um, for a while. But geez, like if you want to you want to find some nasty individuals, go in and post something in a digital nomad group somewhere. And man, it was it was shocking. But anyway, speaking of, of being a digital nomad, I spent almost a year living in South America. <laughs> I lived in Colombia for four months and then in Brazil for six months uh, with I mean, I took a, a trip home for like a week. And other than that, I was I was living in, in foreign countries in South America with a different language for almost a year. Right. That was nerve wracking. But again, like it expanded what I was comfortable with. And so now I, I feel so much freer, like I feel like I can do almost anything because, you know, whatever I do now 
is pretty easy compared to those things that I put myself through in the past. And by the way, most people thought I was crazy for like everything that I listed there. And in fact, a lot of those things, it, when possible, I didn't even tell anybody about because I knew they wouldn't get it, right? Most people think you're crazy if you take risks, which is why most people are stuck. Most people never get what they want out of life. And if you want to have things that most people don't get, you have to be willing to do things that most people are not willing to do and that most people think are crazy. So take risks, push past your fear, don't accept this born this way crap that culture tries to put on us and then plot out the steps that you need to get to the future that you desire and then go take action, go do them, push past the fear and do the things that you know that you need to do to get what you want to get. And then, you know, invite me to hang out in your yacht when you're super successful.